Question of the day. What is your favorite rhyming titled game? No, I wasn't going to make that the serious question of the day, but you know what? On second thought, I am. What's your favorite game that has a rhyming title? I'm sure there are many that I can't think of in the comments below, but let me know what they are. Some of them might even be a foreign language version of the game, or a different language version, I should say, of the game. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite rhyming game is. Because today we're talking about Lizard Wizard, the sequel to Raccoon Tycoon by Glenn Drover. You know, I've talked about Raccoon Tycoon before being a distilled economics game a la brass into the very wonderful forbidden game style. So let's take a look at right now what Lizard Wizard does, what it changes from Raccoon Tycoon, what it adds to the table, and if you need one or the other or both right now. So this is Lizard Wizard setup. Everybody gets two uh, cards here. These are the reagent cards or regent if you're Tom. There you go. Uh, 20 mana is what you start with. This is your currency in the game. The thing is though, your if you've ever played Raccoon Tycoon, all of this is going to sound familiar except for this part, this part, and this part down here. Mostly you had that up there with some buildings down here, but forget about that if you hadn't played it. If It's irrelevant because right now we're going to dive into the things that you can do on your turn in Lizard Wizard because there are a few differences. Now first and foremost on your turn you can gather reagents which means you play one of these reagent cards from your hand and you can choose three of the reagents up here listed in the top. You will take those items from over there in the pool, put them in your supply, maximum of 10. Then you increase the value of everything listed below here. So basically it is a stock market in the sense that you are increasing. So the mushrooms would go up, the mandrakes would go up, the coffee beans, I think that's Eye of Newt, sorry yeah close enough, and then the sulfur would go up, those would all move up in value so that in the future when you choose to convert reagents to mana, you can sell all of one type and you get that much mana per thing you sell. So for instance, if Nightshade is at five and you sell five of them, you would get 25 mana and it would drop by each one you sell. So one, two, three, four, five. That is how that works with the reagents. It's very basic, very simple on purpose. Now, one other thing, you can cast a spell when you're gathering reagents if you have the stuff needed to cast a spell. We will talk about what spells mean in a minute. Next, you can recruit a wizard. So this is basically you are using your mana to duel to fight over these wizards. It's an auction, essentially, in which you put up one of these wizards on auction here in order to get their benefits at the end of the game. Now, typically, their benefits also include, besides points at the end of the game, when you gather reagents, you gather an extra of the type listed in the top left. But also, this symbol here is neat to be matched up with spells because it adds points as well as towers. It doubles the value of how much the wizard's worth if you have it. The difference in this and Raccoon Tycoon is you were looking for sets of wizards. It's not necessarily the case in the sense that you were trying to pair them with towers this time versus the pairing of you know, sets of cats and all that sort of stuff. So you do have that to, you can do, you can auction those off. It even lets you do it in two players. You can auction and then only one bid per person. That way it kind of keeps it more fair. As one goes out, these fill up. The game ends when one of those decks is empty, by the way. So you could play for a while, depending on how your strategy is. Now let's move on to the next thing. This is research a spell. This is a new section. So down here, you pay the mana cost to research one of these spells. You can use the spell immediately if you have the reagents necessary to do it. Now there are certain one-time spells, oh shoot, I forgot to pan the camera here, certain one-time use spells here and then uh, ongoing effects here. So for instance, you could transform any reagent to another reagent at a two to one ratio before converting it to mana. That's really good. Uh, trade one of your wizard or tower cards with the same type owned by another player. The stars at the bottom have gotcha type effects to them. If you don't want to play with gotcha, get rid of the star cards before you play. Now. Those are what spells do, they're just useful, but again, if you pair them with wizards of the same type, so this symbol, or out here we have this symbol, this symbol, and this symbol. If all three are paired together, it's gonna to be good at the end of the game. The next thing you can do is create a tower. So the way that creating a tower works is you pay the cost in gold, which are straight points, or the, uh, the what it's asking for here, so four mandrake pieces, or four gold. Pay that, get the tower. Those towers also give you the ability to have one additional of the items or the ingredients in your list. So the reagents, excuse me, I nearly lost the name there. So normally you can have 10, that would allow you to have 11. Towers continue to grow, you can have 12 if you wanted to. Then you could summon a familiar. Now the familiars are useful for 
they also add for the set collections and adding bonuses at the end of the game, you're gonna get more points from matching up the symbols of the same type. But they also give you this really great ability here that when you gain them, paying the mana cost, you gain one of these four abilities, the one-time use. You could collect seven Mandrake and cast a spell on this one. You could get one gold per enchantment card that you have. The enchantment card is the one with the star. These different symbols correspond to different types of names. You could enter the dungeon is the next thing you could do. So all those are different. You can choose which one you want to do when you choose to collect a familiar. Now, as you enter the dungeon, you are going to do a little push your luck here. Now, there are certain things in here. There are traps, there are enemies, but there's also treasure, lots and lots of treasure. At the end, if you keep this treasure, you're going to get to collect gold, all sorts of good stuff. The gold is worth points at the end of the game. If you get a hit from an enemy, which it'll tell you, you take one hit. If you get hit again, then you uh, come out of the dungeon without keeping anything. If you choose to quit early before taking that second hit, then you get to keep everything you've kept. Now, treasure scores, those would be the cards that don't give you gold immediately, but gold, treasure would be the mo person with the most treasure gets 10 victory points, person with the second most gets two five victory points. So you're going to keep playing again until one of those decks are empty. And then let's talk scoring because that is how the majority of the game works. You're going to keep doing that. One other thing up here, achievement tiles. If you were to complete one of the achievement tiles, you would get this. If you have seven of those, if you have seven of those, five of those, or seven of those, you would then get to reach up and grab those achievement tiles, which are worth a set of points at the end of the game. I believe 10 points a piece. So we'll talk through scoring right now as I'm looking at it to refresh myself again. Every wizard card plus a tower card paired by a player is worth five points if the schools don't match. So you could pair this one with this one. They would only be worth five points. But if you paired this one with this one, it'd be worth 10 points. Every wizard card plus a tower uh, is worth 10 points if the schools match. Every spell card that is from the same school magic as a tower pair combo is worth five points. Only spell cards that have been cast. So you would have to have got it and then cast it, just so we're clear. You couldn't just hold it. It's gotta be something you've actually cast. Any wizard or tower card that's not able to be paired is worth one victory point. Then gold coins score the equal of their value. Spells score victory points as instructed on the spell card as long as the spell has been cast, which it'll tell you here, basically, uh, how it gives you points. So. Um, some of them it'll some of them are scoring cards uh, then it says dungeon items we talked about that and then the player with the most victory points wins the game that is how you play lizard wizard it is a more technical strategic version of raccoon tycoon but it has some interesting gorgeous art out there as well just like the original so that's what it does that's what it is let's talk final thoughts so that is Lizard Wizard. It is a beautiful looking game. Now, I do have to ding one thing on art. It looks amazing, yes, but the board is actually a little darker than I'd like to see. I'd actually like to see some of that detail just because the art is so good, but that's a quibble based on aesthetics, not so much gameplay. Anyway, uh, art on the game is amazing. The dragons look awesome. The towers look awesome. The spell cards are a little flat for me. I would like to have seen more on that, but again, as good as the art is for the other cards, it's, it's quite okay. Um, but because I get what they are. They're a scroll teaching you the spell. It's not about showing you the spell. It's you've got to learn the spell. So I get it. But just that's the one piece that I thought, oh, I'd like to have seen a little more there. But that's the art of the game. It's top notch. It always is with Forbidden Games. that They go above and beyond to make games look beautiful. Uh, but, but how does the game play? So forget Raccoon Tycoon for a minute. Forget if you've ever played it. Just forget it for a second. This game on its own does and delivers a fantastic economic experience with a magical background. The theming is not as important. When I say theming, I don't mean that the theme of lizards and wizards. I mean the idea that you're, you're not auctioning, but you're dueling. That is not as important to me. I love the fact that you, are, you actually are auctioning uh, those things based on mana and reagents and sort of things like that. I, I love how I've always loved how Raccoon Tycoon plays, and so the additional things of you know adding the spells, adding the push your luck dungeon are little things of of, of tweaks and extras that I just enjoy. So I, um, if you would have never played Raccoon Tycoon, let me just go through really quick this one. This game looks good. I love the way the game works as far as getting the items that you need, which drives the price up on cards selling them which drives the price down that market to me has always been one of the simplest but most smooth gaming markets i've played and so i really enjoy that about raccoon tycoon and the successor obviously lizard wizard what this one changes is it adds those tweaks of, okay now you had to have the city or the town and the set of railroad cards but now you need spells that do stuff instead of it just being another railroad card it's okay instead of that let me match the set with a spell let me match the set now with a familiar. 
and get all these powers that these familiars do, all the powers that the spells do if they're cast, and then, hey, I can also push my luck and go to the dungeon. Those little tweaks are nice. I really do enjoy that. So if you haven't played Raccoon Tycoon, this one's going to seem a little bit deeper, I should say, a little bit more strategic, because then you go, oh, wait a minute, I'm setting myself up eventually to get the familiar instead of just town, just um, railroad baron or building, right? So you're actually kind of going deeper in that strategy. What can happen, though, is that can take you a little bit of adjustment to get used to the idea of, wait a minute, I was used to kind of the simple idea. I want to really figure out what I need to do. So it can kind of almost AP you a little bit in the early stages of this. Okay, what do I even need right now, right? So there's that tricky part. But at the end of the day, these new attachments to the game are really nice. Now, here's the question that kind of comes down to it. If you're going to have, uh, if you can have both in your collection, can you have Raccoon Tycoon and Lizard Wizard? Or is this one you just, I'll never play Raccoon Tycoon again? No, I don't think so. I think you can keep both in your collection because Raccoon Tycoon's simplicity is why I like it versus Lizard Wizard having those extra complex, deep things that make it a little bit harder to teach brand new people to the game, but enough to keep people really interested and easy enough to ease them into. They're different enough to where you can have because obviously we play games all the time that are very similar. Raccoon Tycoon, Lizard Wizard, if you didn't tell people they were sequels like this, you could get away with playing one one week and then a month or so later playing the other one. And people would go, hey, this is kind of like that other game. They wouldn't go, oh, is this, this is just that other game with a different skin because those changes are different enough. So I do think you can and should own both of these games. Which one do I like better or am I going to grab off the shelf? You'll have to wait for a video on that because I haven't really fully made up my mind which one of these I'm going to grab off the shelf for every time because they're both great games, but eventually one of those is going to get my hand reaching for it more. Somebody's going to get these hands reaching for it more than the other one, and we'll find that out later at another juncture. So, Lizard Wizard, beautiful game, great mechanics, extra deep, can run a little long, though, is the only downside because of the uh, different variety of things that you can do because now you have multiple decks so you can empty... But then again, it still has you know the same assortment of types of cards, so you take some out based on player count. So all in all, great game, beautiful game. I, I just love what Forbidden Games does. So that's Lizard Wizard, big fan, Brian Drake here, Dice Tower, at Dice Tower Brian. We'll see you next time. Well, I just cut out a bunch of words. It was like Kevin.